Lord Jesus, Lord of Jesus, Jesus avails in this house. Avails in this house. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus cleanses me. Cleanses me. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus covers me. Covers me. Come on, give the Lord a round. Look to your neighbor. And tell them I am appointed because I am anointed. And the axis of this message revolves around verse 1 and verse 12. Beloved of God. Growth and greatness, growth and greatness are two components that bears a profound expectancy on life. Let me reword it for you that you can get it. As long as you are living and you function in your correct faculties, evangelist key. There's a great expectancy for growth and a great expectancy for greatness. Unless, Deacon Alexander, you have some sort of deformity, the individual who live a normal productive life in their course of life there's an expectancy from that individual that they will grow and be great in one dimension or the other uh, bear with me I'm building something here in the context of childbearing from the initial stage of conception through the process to adulthood, that baby is expected to grow not only in stature, but in intellectual capacity. Uh, you mothers know what I'm talking about. From, from the time that that baby is delivered, a matter of fact, in the womb, the, the, the baby does not stay in the same size or same form as it was when it was a week. As the weeks and days go by, that baby grows in the womb and it grows to maturity. When it is delivered, it is suffered from the umbilical cord, my God, and it goes directly on breast milk. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, but uh, it does not stay, co-pastor, on breast milk for too long. Because there come a season called weaning. And after that season, glory be to God, you put it on something a little bit more thicker or a little bit more solid. Uh, and, and, and as that baby goes on, on, on a camera, that formula, I can't remember the name of it, is S -A -A formula, I don't know if that still stirs, as, as it goes on the formula, something is happening in the, the body of that baby as long as it is not deformed, as long as it is not Down syndrome, as long as there is not uh, incapacity in the mental system, uh, that baby is going to grow whether you like it or not. If you're not careful, the baby is going to begin to eat everything that is not nailed down. Oh my goodness. And that baby will grow. Sometimes some babies, when you lift them up, they are so solid and heavy because it is growing. It is an expectancy of life. Oh my God, as long as you are living, that you will grow. When you believe the fact or not, you are going to grow. Oh my God, and it is in that tender stage, from the baby stage, probably to about teenage years, that you will grow in stature. And the reason why, my God, the baby ends up at kindergarten as a baby, but then it gets older, it goes through primary school, it goes through secondary school, and then tertiary school, is because it is not at the same level it was at 10 years ago. Come on, I'm following you this morning. And whether they learn well or not, 
The truth is they're still going to grow in stature. Whether they're learning them or not, the truth is someday they're going to come out of the school system. Oh my God, because somewhere along the line, the process expects growth and greatness. Well, I'm building something here. In the context of farming or in the context of agriculture, the sorrow of the seed expects a healthy crop to grow to produce a bountiful harvest in return. We don't go and buy seedlings and seeds and plant them in the ground and buy fertilizer just because you don't have nothing to do with your money. But what you're going to do or what you're doing is when you're planting stuff, you expect something to grow. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh my God, oh my God. And when that stuff grows, you're expecting a harvest from what you have planted. And that's why you're so careful to apply the fertilizer. You're so careful to apply the pesticide and the insecticide. You're so careful because you do not want the bugs and the, the, the branches of the crop to destroy the crop. You do not want it last. That's why you put up your fence for the thieves to deep in your crop, my God. Because you want something out of your harvest. Oh Lord. In the context of politics, oh my goodness, every ruling government expects its economy to grow under its leadership. They're not going into their tenor for failure or for no confidence motions. Oh my God, they don't go out there and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign to get in, then to fail because they know when they fail in their term, the next term they know what's going to happen. Oh my God. So, so, so they're in there to get benefits one way or the other. They're in there to get the confidence of the people. They're in there to grow politically, to grow academically, whoever they desire to grow. But they're in there to, to become great. They're in there to reap the fruit of their education or their academia. They didn't go to law school. They didn't go to university just because they don't have anything else to do. They're great or they live there because they expect something great from their career. Oh, follow me. Follow me this morning. I'm coming close. I'm coming close. In the context of religion, every denomination evangelizes its religion expecting growth and advancement based on their own rules, their own policies and doctrines. Oh, it is not only the Christian church that evangelizes. Every denomination evangelizes. They evangelize what they believe in. We got them out there in the straw hats on Wednesday and Saturdays. Oh Lord, my goodness. We got them out there on Friday evenings and all their Saturday. They evangelize and what they believe in because they want their denomination to grow. Oh Lord, follow me today. It is about growth, it is about greatness. And I must tell you, it is noted that the kingdom of God is no different. The kingdom of God is no different. Oh my God. But I need to tell you that the kingdom of God stands against the influence of religion and it stands upon the power and revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, we are evangelizing the same way, but we are not influenced, oh my God, by religion. We are not influenced by the doctrines of men. Oh, we are not influenced by the doctrines of devils. Oh my God. The kingdom of God is revealed through signs, wonders, and miracles. And the reason why you'll be added to the kingdom is because God is expecting growth. He's expecting greatness. Oh my goodness. I've come to tell you today that the kingdom of God is revealed through the infallible truths of God's word. The kingdom of God is revealed through God's people and it is for this reason you are anointed and appointed. Oh, touch your neighbor and say, I am I'm, I'm anointed. Sorry, I'm appointed because I'm anointed. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of life. It is not a kingdom of 
doom and gloom and death. It is not a kingdom of stagnancy. It is not a kingdom of setback. It is not a kingdom of procrastination. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of life. I heard one writer say that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And if we have the spirit of the only true and living God, when we open our mouth, Minister Rosa, it should not be that the brothers and sisters go away suppressed, discouraged, and disappointed. But it should be that I would shop his iron. It should be that somebody's spirit is lifted up, oh Lord. If we are operating under the umbrella of the kingdom of God, Minister Veronica, it means then that when we speak life, our belly shall flow rivers of what? Living water. Oh, I'm going to have some church soon, brother, now that you know. Why 
church has been gone on power is because for them they got to do with credentials. Oh Lord, for them they got something to do with certificates. They got to do with what school you went to and what university you went to. Oh my God, and the devil is wrapping havoc in their church. Oh God, but I've come to tell you today, the devil ain't coming in here because there's a fire around the church. There's a glory around the church. Oh my God, I wish I had a witness.
kingdom of God is a kingdom of righteousness. And I say to the church today that every investor expects growth and returns from their investment and the kingdom of God is no different. And God has deposited in every one of you candidates today. By extension, he has deposited in every believer who is born again. And whatever he has deposited, Minister Roy, he is expecting a return. Oh, Lord, you're going quite now, see? God expects growth. And this is why you are anointed and appointed. For growth to take place in God's kingdom, the Apostle Paul outlined four things in the text which we read. Can I, can I, can I teach you a little bit? Four things he outlined in the same text in Ephesians 4 from verse 1 to 12. And I marvel, co Pastor East, that he starts with the ammunition of walking worthy. Uh, you see, you see, many folks got the talk, but not the walk. Only, only, only last night on my last trip back to the depot, this Rastafarian guy or a guy with dreadlocks, I should say. Got into the bus at a certain point, and by a certain point, he comes and he whispers in my ear. He said, "Driver, uh, could you give me a break, please? I've been drinking all day, and now I have to ease myself. Could you put me somewhere where uh, it is kind of private, where I can ease myself?" <laughs> so I pulled up in a dark area, and he went and he eased himself for a couple of seconds and came back. Uh, watch me carefully. Watch me. Watch me. About 10 minutes later, a lady got the bus, and this same guy is talking about Jesus. And he's quoting scriptures accurately. Oh Lord, and he engages the woman in scriptural talk. Uh, they debated some stuff, uh, and he's debating the word on Jesus' side. Uh, he's condemning the word, he's, he's, he's evangelizing the word, and I'm smiling to myself. I'm saying, they have picked into my sermon and they don't even know. Uh, they have given me a nugget to put into my sermon. Uh, and, and, and then he and the lady, they can understand that they're, 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 they're exchanging scriptures uh, of what is and what is not. Uh, and I listen carefully, you see, you, you, you just cannot take things out. Yes, value. You've got to learn to listen. Oh my God. And within a, a few moments of the conversation, I heard him bring back the topic about he had some drinks today. Oh Lord. And I heard she said that she does have some drinks too. And these people carry on a conversation about God. Oh Lord. And I listened a little bit longer, Minister Rosa, and then the profanity came out. The expletives came out. The colorful words came out. Oh Lord, and I'm smiling to myself because many folks got the talk, but they ain't got the walk. Oh Lord, but first Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 tells me straight that the kingdom of God is not word, but it is power. Oh Lord, power is not something that you talk. Power is demonstrative. It is active. It is proactive. Oh Lord. Many people talk about they know God. They talk about how they love God. But look at their lives. And I've come to tell you today that the world ain't listening just to what you say anymore. They ain't foolish anymore. They're analyzing your lifestyle. Oh my God. That's why the apostles say you need to walk worthy. Because they tell us something, that is anything that fuels the anointing, that is anything that propels the anointing, that is anything that empowers the anointing, it is integrity. Oh my God, oh my God, I feel it right here. I 
feeling right here. I remember the dream of Joseph. The Bible says that he was cast into the pit. And then he was sold to the Ishmaelites. And then he was, oh my God, caught into the palace of Potiphar. Oh my God. And when Potiphar realized that the Lord was with Joseph. Because in the pit he had integrity. When he was a slave, he had integrity. And now he's in the palace, my God. He still got integrity. And the Lord was with him. And the Bible says that God blessed the Egyptians. He blessed everybody in that jurisdiction because of Joseph. I've got to talk to you today that because you are anointed and appointed, that God is going to bless your workplace. He's going to bless your community. He's going to bless your nation. Because righteousness exalts the nation. He's going to bless your family just because of you. And the Bible says that the Trusting everything to Joseph. But out comes his wife. Oh Lord, look at that curly hair boy, handsome. Something a little like me, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a little bit taller, glory be to God. But she saw something that she wanted. Oh my God, and she saw the opportunity. But I've come to tell the church today that the first opportunity is not necessarily the right opportunity. We're going to learn to seek the Lord. We're going to learn to, my God, to intercede in prayer. Because the first thing that pops up is not always what God wants you to have. Oh my God, can I talk to the husbands today? You've got to be very careful of who you're married to. You've got to be very careful of who you connect to. You've got to be very careful of who you allow in your space. Because some people are about to destroy your anointing. Oh my God, but what she didn't know is that because Joseph was a dreamer, it means automatically he was a discerner. And he discerned the motive behind her action. Oh Lord, it reminds me of Paul. Oh my God, I'm the damsel. There, she had to talk, Sister Breaker. Oh my God, she had to talk. She pronounced accurately, but the motive was evil. Oh my God, and the spirit of discernment move among the apostles. Can I tell you that you need the spirit of discernment? In the Bible says that she said to his wife, oh can I do this thing? I sinned against God. And she was not satisfied that she was rejected. Oh Lord, some folk is not going to be satisfied when you reject them. Some managers and some bosses are not going to be satisfied when you reject them. Some people are around you are not going to be satisfied when you reject them because of righteousness. Some people in your family ain't going to be satisfied when you reject them because of righteousness. And they're a plot against you. And I've come to warn you today that the enemy always looks for evidence because there's a court in heaven and there's a court in earth. And you cannot be condemned unless there's evidence. Oh my God, oh my God. In the Bible, tell me that when he flee from Potiphar's wife, my God, he left piece of his shirt in her hand and she used it. Oh my God. She twisted it. She fabricated it. She lied about it. My God, and Potiphar got mad. Oh my goodness. I'm thrown to the in prison. But I'll come to tell you that when you are thrown in the prison because of righteousness, when you are condemned because of righteousness, when you suffer because of righteousness, whatever you do because of righteousness, oh my God, God is with you. And even in the prison, I'll tell you today that God was with Joseph. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. My, the phrase he had in prison were not with him because he, he tells the butler and the baker, when you leave here, remember me. When you got out, they forgot all about it. I come to tell you, as the old people say, you help you buy a big foot horse, but never help you. You don't dare with me yet. You ain't dare with me yet. You want to learn to walk worthy. You cannot dwell upon the opinions of others. You cannot go with whatever stick and it does not align with the word. You got to know what the word says about walking worthy. Oh Lord Jesus. In Genesis 20, here comes a man who is dead as the forefathers of this world. The Bible says he became the friend of God because he believed God. 
and, 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 and Kiri is, he's afraid of death because of his wife. I don't want to peep into nobody's marriages. But he's afraid that they might kill him because his wife is so beautiful. Anybody got a beautiful wife today? Yes, Mr. Rosa. Yes. 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 Amen. And, and he concocted the story that if they ask you who you are, tell them you are my sister. Tell them I'm your brother. And she conspired with that conspiracy. And the Bible says because of this, a man of integrity took Sarah to be wife. A man called Abimelech. Oh Lord, can I talk to some dreamers today? Oh Lord, because when you're going astray, God is going to make sure he convicts you. Whether by vision, by dreams, by YouTube, whatever you're going to do, he's going to do it to make sure you stay into alignment. And the Bible says that God appeared to Abimelech in a dream. And says to Abimelech, you are but a dead man. Oh my God, because the woman that you have is another man's wife. And Abimelech did they not say that she's his sister. They did not say that he's her brother. And because of this, and because of the integrity of my heart, I took her to be wife. And God said, yes, I know it was because of the integrity. Somebody say integrity. Integrity is going to keep you. Oh Lord, the Bible says that God is a Abimelech because of the integrity of your heart. I, God, withheld you from touching her. Oh Lord, your integrity, even if you make an oblivious mistake, is going to keep you into alignment. So when you find out that there's certain things that you just can't do, certain things that you just can't say, certain things that you just can't go, it's because it's in the integrity of your spirit that God is working through to keep you from sinning against sin. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh my God, oh my God, can I move on? Oh Lord, in, in, in the text, we gotta live above reproach. The apostles, apostles say we gotta live in all lowliness, not low bar, lowliness. In other words, in all humility. We gotta live in all meekness. Be obedient. We gotta live in long suffering. We gotta learn to be patient. Oh God, we gotta live, oh my God, in love, forbearing one another in love. Oh Lord, don't think you can love God and don't love your neighbor. Um, second thing I want to say is in the text, the Apostle Paul outlined that we must keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. He says there's one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. So, so, so there is no Buddha, there's no confusion, there, 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 there is no Heli Silasii, there's no Skiva, there, there is no other God but the God that you have been called by. Uh, let, let me rework that for you because you're looking confused. And if you ever think that the reason you are here and appointed and anointed is because of another God, you need to get that out of your spirit. You have been called by one God. He is not divided across the Caribbean and across Europe. He is one God, one Lord. The baptism which you will be baptized in is one baptism. Oh my God. Not the one where you walk backwards at night. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. That's a creepy thing. And that exposes some religions. Oh God. Not the one where you pour fruity and coke on you and tell you your sins are washed away. No. Not the one where you sprinkle the water on you at the back of the church and say that you are baptized, especially as a baby. No, 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 no. There is one baptism and it's by immersion. Oh God, oh God. We gonna understand scripture today. Oh my Lord. There's one God. Oh Lord, I don't know who you pray to, but I know who I pray to. Oh my God, the God that heareth, the God that healeth, the God that delivereth. In the name of the Lord, there's a 
strong power and the righteous remedy and they are saved. Oh my God, he's my rock and my salvation. He's my Emmanuel. He's the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. Oh my God, he is the counselor. Oh my God, he's the alpha and the amigo. You all know the God I'm talking about. Oh my Lord, he is the only true and living God who has already said all other gods are but dead. So we must keep the unity. Oh Lord, in other words, uh, what we have now ought not to be. It should not be Jehovah's, it should not be seven days, it should not be the holiness. Oh my God, oh, oh Lord, it should not be New Testament, it should not be all of these denominations. Why do you say so, Pastor? Because when he comes back, he's coming back for you, not a denomination. Oh Lord, I don't want to touch about that is because some people are stuck. And by what that religion proclaims and propagates. And they restrict the move and the power of the Holy Ghost. But there's one spirit. How can you have a church and deny the move of the Holy Spirit? How can you have a church and deny the speaking of tongues? Oh my God. All I'm saying is that they have a form of godliness. Point number three, let me get out of here quickly. You gotta know your calling. Because God does not expect you to be prejudiced. The Bible says that, that the one who give the grace or the special grace, there are three types of grace. The sovereign grace, the saving grace, and the special grace. The sovereign grace is the grace that hangs over the whole world where he causes his reign to fall on the just and the unjust. The saving grace is the one where you have been called to God by the Spirit of God and you have been water baptized. You'll be saved by the blood of Jesus. And the special grace is the grace that you are empowered with gifts and offices. Glory be to God. That's the special grace. And he has given all of us a special grace. And then we get thanks with one another because Christ has empowered somebody else with something that you don't have. And, 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 and he says, he has given some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Various ministrations of the body he has given some. And it is funny, man of God, that you say that later on, there will be an extension of the ordination because I felt that in my spirit as it was here. There's some folk who are going to come in pretty soon. So, 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 you need to know your calling, called Master. When we understand what is our calling, then we will concentrate, cultivate, and permeate and radiate in our calling. Uh, let me bring it down for me, get over here because I feel the Holy Spirit wants to move today. And finally, number four, you got to know the purpose of your calling. It is an indictment on the church. Then the persons who are gifted, especially in the prophetic realm and the apostolic realm, it is an indictment on the church where these individuals propagate their own self-centeredness. And then they tell you, because they operate by the gift, and you see the demonstration of the gift, they call money lines. You all want to I heard one minister say sometime that there's a particular apostle he can see into your pocket. But if he can see into my pocket, he ain't gonna call me to bring two thousand dollars. It is an 
enlightenment on the church, then they use the gift and they break up marriages. Uh, you, 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 you all, you all don't quiet. You, you all don't want to admit this stuff. Many of the marriages broken up in church has been fueled by ministers. Uh, oh Lord, you all going to say, "Wait, Pastor, why are we so hard on the church?" Because judgment is going to be the game at the house of God. And, and, and the thing about it is that when we use our gift for selfish and vain glory rather than the church being edified the church is being destroyed sheep are being scattered oh my god oh my god oh my god but what i understand you youth minister currently is that when we use the gifts in its right appropriation the church is edified the brethren is strengthened the sick they are healed oh my god the demon possessed they are set free the blind they begin to see again those that are deaf, oh my God, I feel like I'm in church. The deaf, oh my God, they begin to hear. Those that are crippled begin to walk. Those that have deficiencies and deformities, oh my God, they begin to become straight again. I've come to tell the church today that when you meet with Jesus and you have the Holy Ghost in your life, you are appointed because you are anointed. And I've come to tell you today, stand with me. Let me bring down this curtain. Oh, 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 oh my God. It is not when you get the title that you are promoted. It's when you get the vitals that you are promoted. And some of you ain't got no title yet, but you're casting on devils. Some of you ain't got no title yet, but you're laying hands on the sick and you're recovering. Some of you ain't got no title yet, but you're calling up some folk on the phone and you're encouraging them. Some of you ain't got no title yet. Yet, but you're encouraging one another. You're working diligently. You're laboring. Oh my God! You're putting your hand to the plow, and you ain't turning back. With some of you ain't get no title yet. Oh my God! And you're a demon chaser. Oh my God! Your anointing is so strong. The wherever you go, it really is the community. It really is your workplace. Some of you ain't got no title yet. Oh my God! And God is using you so great in His mess. Can I tell you that if you wait a little, just a little bit longer, if you carry on my God, as the woman who were crooked for 18 years, the Bible says she was bowed over until the day that she met Jesus. I remember the man by the pool of Bethesda for 40 years. He was by the pool, 38 years, I correct. Oh my God, he was by the pool. And by the way, every time he tried to step in for his healing, my God. Some selfish person step in before him. I've come to warn you, there's gonna be some selfish folk around you who want to get in before you. Oh my god, the grace is not for the swift, not a battle for the strong, but time and chance have lived to them all. I've come to tell you, there's some deceitful folk around you who are smiling your face, a 